Why do pests attack fruit trees? Pests attack fruit trees, or really any plant, because they can actually use it as a food source. So why then is it important for us to differentiate what type of digestive system each of these insects have? The digestive system among most insects, uh, at least the ones that are attacking plants, is what you and I might consider to be a simple digestive system. Simple in the sense that they do not have the complex uh, enzymes that can digest uh, various parts of the plant tissue, and therefore they are going to be rather limited into what they can attack. Therefore, a plant that is already partially digested, that is unhealthy, is going to be attractive to them because it is partially digested. It's going to be much, much easier for them to eat. There are chewing insects or, for instance, sucking insects. Let's take one of those and look at how they digest and how that limits what kinds of plants they'll attack. Uh, the main one uh, that I uh, usually refer to and, and is considered to be among the lowest uh, level of uh, insect digestion are the uh, aphid group. They only have the ability in order to suck certain fluids, usually from, let's say, the phloem tissue or the xylem tissue of the plant. And then once you move up to, well, let's call them higher sucking insects, and now I'm talking about uh, the leaf hoppers, the stink bugs, um, you know, the lantern fly, uh, which is going on up in uh, the northern part of our country. Those type of uh, sucking insects would be of a slightly higher category, and you will find them attacking a higher level uh, plants, in other words, higher quality plants. So let's move on to chewing insects. Well, how are they different? Chewing insects are consuming a lot of food when they chew. So for example, if they're chewing a leaf, uh, they're going to be consuming the entire leaf. That will include uh, the, the epidermal cells, the mesophyll cells, they will include the phloem, the xylem tissue. And I have found that chewing insects uh, have a much easier time at going after um, plants that are um, not quite healthy, but very close to it. It's related to BRICS. Um, can you tell us a little bit about what BRICS is? So the BRICS levels is, for all practical purposes, a measure of sugar. And taking a look at the BRICS levels in a plant is something that gives us an idea of how healthy it is. Why do I say that? is because photosynthesis is the process that plants use in order to make food. And the main byproduct, the main product of it is, is sugar. This is the reason why photosynthesis occurs in plants. And if you have a healthy plant, it will have more sugar. If you have an unhealthy plant, it will have less sugar because it's not photosynthesizing in the way that it should be. So taking advantage of that, we now have something to measure. Most of us in the industry choose to measure uh, leaf bricks as a more accurate measurement. You can test different parts of the plant. I have tested root bricks before, and I've certainly tested fruit bricks before uh, as well. So these all have their, uh, their, their pluses. But as far as the leaf bricks are concerned, this is the most indicative of how the plant is doing because it gives us an idea of how much sugar is moving through the plant and how much sugar is being stored in the plant because a lot of the sugar is stored in the leaves. And this gives us an idea whether it's a high photosynthesizing plant, thus high bricks, or whether it's a low photosynthesizing plant, therefore low bricks. And this BRICS level uh, gives us an idea as to what insect is going to attack it. The internet has not been super clear over the past couple decades uh, because they have always mentioned 12, the magic number of 12 BRICS, which corresponds to about 12% sugar. And uh, they have said in the past that if it's above 12 BRICS, you're not going to get insect damage and anything below 12 BRICS, uh, you are going to get insect damage. And it's a very simplistic approach. I mean, for the most part, it works out. And if everyone is comfortable with that, you can choose to go in that direction. But being the scientist, uh, I was interested in knowing a little bit more. And uh, in the process of uh, testing plants, I have noticed that there is more to it uh, than just 12 bricks. And that's why the chart that I have starts to break down the different levels, especially as you go below 12 because you just don't find the same insects attacking an 11.4 bricks plant 
as you do attacking a 3.9 BRICS plant. We're talking about BRICS, and a lot of the listeners to the program today are going to say, well, how do I even know what the BRICS is? Is there a way for home growers to be able to measure the BRICS of their tree? In order to tell, uh, we we just prefer to test. It's a, It's a matter of simply crushing the leaf and then taking the liquid content, not the solid content, taking the liquid content, then that liquid usually only two or three drops is necessary, is uh, placed on a device called a refractometer. There are refractometers that we can get as homeowners and and small-scale growers that are online um, that are, what, $35 or something? Sure, sure. 50 bucks. Um, So this is something that we can have fun with too, um, measuring the bricks of our trees and as it changes through the seasons. Oh, sure, sure. Absolutely. If you're doing this on a weekly basis, incredibly valuable information is to take a look at your crop on a week by week basis to see how the bricks changes. 